as the crow flies at some 240,000 to 250,000 miles to the moon. The exact distance depends on the position of the moon in its orbit. Three men will make that journey in a spacecraft. Two of them will land on the moon. The third will have traveled 250,000 miles and come within 92 miles of the moon. But he will share equally in the epic event of our century, the first time man has set foot on the solid ground of another heavenly body. Launching the three-man Apollo spacecraft will be the Saturn V launch vehicle. It has three separate launch stages. Together, they generate enough power to lift 250,000 pounds from the launch pad, 40 times the weight of Gemini, 85 times the weight of Mercury. In the left couch of the spacecraft, the commander bears full crew responsibility for the mission. In the middle couch is the command module pilot, the one man who will not land on the moon. Right couch, lunar module pilot, a specialist in the systems of the separate spacecraft which lands on and takes off from the moon. Attached to the spacecraft is the service module, an equipment and propulsion unit. It includes a large main propulsion engine and smaller jets for maneuvering in space. The lunar module is a strange looking craft. However, it's not designed to look good, but to land in an airless atmosphere under one-sixth gravity. spacecraft is not launched directly to the moon, but first into an Earth orbit. In early stages of launch, a separate launch escape system is ready to pull the spacecraft free in case of emergency. At 39 miles altitude, the first stage exhausts its fuel and is jettisoned as the second stage ignites. stage structure falls away, as does the launch escape system. Shown here in animation, the second stage is jettisoned. The third and final stage of the rocket is fired, inserting the spacecraft into a 115-mile parking orbit. The third stage is shut down, but it will be fired later a second time. Now, the moment of decision looms ahead. Apollo is orbiting the Earth. Commander and crew check out the systems. The flight director at Houston receives a constant stream of information. From the network of tracking stations comes the exact orbit. From Marshall Space Flight Center, verification that the third stage can be fired again. From the doctors in mission control, the condition of the crew. Flight final. Go final. Source degree. We're go. Right. Computers make final calculations and transmit them to the spacecraft. On the shoulders of the flight director rests the final responsibility for committing three human beings to a flight one quarter of a million miles into space. That decision will come most likely in the second orbit over the ocean. Crew secure in their couches. The third stage is fired automatically for five and a half minutes. And man is on his way. Fifteen minutes outward bound on the translunar trajectory, the commander fires his reaction jets. He turns around. 
and docks with the lunar module. The third stage is jettisoned. Now the large propulsion engine of the service module is free for later use. The crew is now actually coasting in the vacuum of space. Average velocity, 3,300 miles an hour. The flight will take about three days. The deep space tracking network monitors the position of the spacecraft and provides communications with it. Two or three mid-course corrections can be made from mission control during the flight to the moon. The commander navigates independently by taking star readings as a backup to ground computations. Then as the spacecraft swings around the moon, the service module engine is fired, reducing velocity. The crew is in an orbit 92 miles above the moon. Two men, the commander and lunar module pilot, transfer to the lunar module through the nose of the spacecraft. The lunar module is separated. Its descent engine lowers it near a pre-selected landing area on the moon's surface. The commander takes over the controls of his spacecraft and manually flies it to final touchdown. When they reach the surface, the astronauts cannot go out immediately. They must first check out the lunar module systems. They then put on their lunar spacesuits and backpacks to protect them against the outside temperature of some 200 degrees Fahrenheit, random meteoroid impact and to furnish oxygen and pressure in the airless void. Some two hours after landing, two Americans will stand together for the first time on the moon. Surrounded by the silence of five billion years, they will set to work. Their first major task of exploration is to set up a series of experiment packages similar to these modules being tested on a simulated moon. Powered by a small atomic generator, these scientific experiments will send information back to Earth long after the astronauts have left. Scientific data on the charged particles of the solar wind, magnetic characteristics of the moon, and seismic activity. The crew has a second major job ahead of them. Gather 40 to 50 pounds of lunar samples and pack them in vacuum sealed containers. They will stay on the moon about 24 hours, returning to their spacecraft to eat, replenish oxygen, and sleep. To rejoin the Apollo spacecraft, which has been continuously orbiting the moon, the crew fires a separate ascent engine, leaving behind its descent engine and landing platform. After rendezvous and dock with the Apollo, the exploring crew, with their lunar samples, transfers back to the Apollo spacecraft. The lunar module is separated and left in orbit around the moon. The main engine of the service module fires, sending the spacecraft on its course toward Earth. This is, of course, the reverse side of the coin to the trip to the moon. If required, mid-course corrections can again be made. After over a week in space and some 20 minutes before re-entering the atmosphere, the service module is jettisoned. Now all that is left of the original space vehicle is the command module. The re-entry path will be controlled by the computer inserting the spacecraft into a safe corridor perhaps 20 miles deep. The crew can make manual corrections within this corridor. As the spacecraft is slowed up by the increasing density of the atmosphere, enormous heat builds up, but the crew is protected by special shielding. At 10,000 feet, the three main parachutes are deployed. And the spacecraft slows up to a safe landing. But a landing from the moon differs from past landings from space 
the crew and lunar samples will transfer from their spacecraft directly to a mobile quarantine laboratory on the recovery ship. They will be flown to the Lunar Receiving Laboratory at the Manned Spacecraft Center, Houston. There the crew and their invaluable cargo will remain in quarantine. Crew three weeks, lunar samples four weeks. Foreign scientists will join American scientists to probe some vital questions. Was the moon originally part of the Earth, perhaps ripped from the Pacific Ocean? If so, what was the Earth like five billion years ago? In asking such questions, and in getting new perspectives on his own home, Earth, man may come to some ultimate answers about the universe and about himself. <laughs>